This is the plaintiff, Eric Langleben. He says the defendant T-boned him while he was driving. His car spun 180 degrees and he's quite frankly lucky to be alive. When he got out of the car, he collapsed to the ground. He was transported to the hospital and had severe neck pain from the crash. Not once did the defendants check on him, even when he was lying on the side of the road surrounded by dog feces, which is an outrage. He's suing for $3,472.80, the amount he's owed. These are the defendants, Ehab Musa and Muna Bosta. Ehab says the plaintiff ran a red light and he crashed into his wife, Muna. That's right, the accident was 100% the plaintiff's fault. Besides, insurance covered the plaintiff's damages. He has no idea why he or his wife are being sued today and owes the man nothing because this accident was caused by the plaintiff. They're accused of making direct contact. The defendants have filed a countersuit for $1,463.84 for damages to their car. All parties, please raise your radiance. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff says the defendants T-boned him, and he ended up going to the hospital in an ambulance, and the defendants just don't care. But the defendants say the plaintiff ran a red light. It's the case of, I have a nice T-bone for you. Thank you, Douglas. Eric Langleben, you are suing Ehab Musa and Muna Bosta? For $3,472.80, the remaining value of your Honda Accord that you demand to be paid for because you say an, an accident that occurred between you folks was her fault. And you have a counterclaim against him for the value of the estimate for the damages to your car, which have not been paid. All right, tell me what's going on. On December 7th at approximately 2.15 in the afternoon. Let's do something. Is this the intersection? Yes. Okay, come on over here. Don't talk until you get there. Good. I was waiting at the light approximately back here. There were cars in front of me. Okay. The defendant was coming from this direction. Ah. The light changed green. The cars in front of me proceeded. I made it three quarters, this whole entire lane going uh, northbound, I crossed. I got to about right here where she hit me behind my right wheel, spun my car around 360. She parked here and I ended up here. And according to you, you had the green light. Yes, and according to the police report, I do, I suppose- No, according to the police report, you said you had the green light. Yeah. And a witness said you might have had a yellow. But I don't know how he could and have And then a witness it. said, did that witness change your testimony later and say the it was a- The witness changed his testimony. And said that you had a red. Right. So go ahead and, and go back. So what happens after that? I tried to get out of the car once I parked in that spot and I collapsed to the ground. And the car traveling behind the defendant, uh, they stopped and got out and ran to me. And I collapsed on the ground because I was knocked out of breath. They picked me up, they put me on the grass, and they told me to not move and relax and stay calm. I kept trying to want to get up to see the damage to the car. And they said- What that kind of car is this? A 2001 Honda Accord of EXV6. I have pictures of it. Yeah, let me see them. Sure. The top pictures of the of the collision and the last tour of the condition it was in before. What's this a picture of? That's my blown side airbag because I was hit from the side. So did you end up in a hospital? Yes, I was taken away on a backboard and a cervical collar in an ambulance to Staten Island Hospital North. Okay, how long did you spend in the hospital? A couple hours. Okay, and then they released you? Yes. Okay, did you have any injuries? Yes, I have injuries. I have cervical injuries, I have MRI reports and physical Do you have therapy. a lawyer? I have a lawyer for a separate case. On this, though? Yes. Okay. Now, you contact their insurance company, correct? correct? And what does the insurance company tell you? They were bargaining with me. They initially offered me 10% and held me 90% liable for the accident. And why did they say you were 90% liable? Because I went through a red light. They got in touch with the witness, who I could not get in touch with, and neither could my insurance company. So go on. And um, I said, no, I'm not liable. Okay, you know on the police support, the, person's, uh, the person originally said that you might have run a yellow light. It might have changed in the middle. Of you? Of the intersection. So you end up negotiating with their insurance company for your car. Right. But you're suing today for your car. 
because I didn't get paid in full to fix it. Right, but you accepted a check from them for your car. Yes. Okay, now they valued your car at what? For almost $4,800, forty seven dollars Okay, you 7, know Kelly 65. Blue Book values your car vastly lower than that. They actually valued your car really high, which is good for you. Okay. And then what they did was they negotiated with you the percentage, correct? Yes. Of liability. So in the end, how, what percentage of liability did they ascribe to you? 60%. This is kind of an all or nothing. I don't get it. I mean, I get negotiations. Negotiations are give and take. But it's kind of an all or nothing. Somebody's a fault and somebody's not a fault. Can I ask you to please come to the podium, Ms. Basta, and tell me how this happened? Are you in, in the I'm lane? Going straight. Yes, you're going straight. And are you in, in that lane or are you in this no, lane? No, in this lane. Okay. Oh. And then what happens? I'm well, that's where you put it in the first place. So I don't know why you're getting indignant, yeah. but go ahead. I'm, I'm stopped in the red light. Okay. When the turn green, I, I just pushed the little guy here. He throw faster. I, he hit me in my bumper and my, lance is bl my car lance is bled, stuck in his car, and he he runs like this. After that, I pull over his hair, go out from, the, from my car, and looking, to, because I have two, two children in my car. Okay. Two years and four years. After that, the witness, who is called the police, came to me. And, and he says, are you okay? Is your children, yeah, are your okay. children okay? And he still talking with the police, give, give the police the, na the name streets. And ask, I ask him, you saw what happened? He said, he told me, yeah, the guy, uh, cut it red light. Say again? That the guy had a red light. Uh, red light. Okay. Why do you suppose the police wrote that he may have had a yellow? I don't know. I don't know. I All don't right. Know. But we do know, because you learn it from the insurance company, uh, that the guy said, no, he had a red light, that the, that the witness says from, that you had a from, red light. From their insurance company. That's what I learned. Uh-huh. Okay. Go ahead and go back. <clears throat> do you have a picture of the damage to your... You weren't yeah. there. I came no. in after 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And when you get there, do you talk to the police or anybody else? I, by the time I get there, uh, uh, the plaintiff already left. And, you know, I talked to the police officer, ask him what happened. Because, you know, my wife called me. And, you know, luckily, I mean, I had switched from different company to another company for, uh, for the insurance company just, you know, seven days before. I have a proof of that. Why is that lucky? New company's better? No. <laughs> <laughs> when I switched from the other company, the guy, the uh, police officer, he took the old insurance company. By the time I came, I gave him all the information. So I was like, you know, shocked how the plaintiff know my, uh, my new insurance company. While I, when I talked to the police officer, they told me you have to wait till the police report, like two days after. Okay, so, well, I don't know, but yeah. you did. But anyway, based on the damage that happened to the both vehicles, that's indicated, and here's the picture. Okay. Where's the damage to your car? It's in, in the middle, according to the police report. Which right is, here? The, yeah. Yes. The, okay. That's it? This wasn't very high impact. Yeah, it's not. How did your car get, wow. Yeah. It happens. And if your you car look, was... Because <laughs> she's moving. What if, difference does that make? Your car's moving, her car's moving, her car has virtually no damage, your car is a total loss? Yeah. Did they total loss it? Yes, I have to. Uh, it's not really board. a total loss, you can fix it, right? In fact. It's you salvage. agreed with them that you wanted your car back. Yes, So you they kind charged. of bought back your car and took a little less. Yes. So you've had all these negotiations with the insurance company. And you do understand that they are acting on his behalf, mm -hmm. right? Sure. So you basically settle a case with him and then you sue him in court. You don't see something wrong with that? So can the plaintiff turn around and sue the, pla the defendants if, he's settle if, if it's already settled with the insurance company? No, if it's already settled, there's legal documents, it's official, they can't, I mean, what would, what would a jury say? Well, the point is, I guess, wouldn't the, uh, the guy saying, look, I'm out of money, I, I'm still out of money, if you settle, are you out of luck? No, because he, he settled for the he, amount. So he settled for the amount, he's out of luck. Yeah. Okay, going inside the courtroom. You can't settle something and go, okay, we're settled, we're all done. It's all settled. We're all done. Thank you for the check. Go to the bank, cash it, and then file a lawsuit the next day for the rest of what you didn't negotiate. I couldn't get any more. That's right. <laughs> and that's what we call that. You couldn't get any more. Period. Okay. You're frustrated because according to you in your complaint, you say, it really frustrates me how the insurance company had all the marbles and they're calling all the shots. They're not. All you have to do is reject the money. I see. And then go to court and sue for the whole thing. But you wanted the money. But you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't take the money, take the settlement, and then go to court and sue. And now where are we? Now we're in a position where they're counterclaiming against you. So I have to figure out who's actually at fault. And it's not looking good for you. Now you contact his insurance company. Yes. And what does his insurance company tell you? 
by the time, like, you know, it, uh, I opened the claim with them, uh, I was waiting for them to just to call well, me. When you say them, who are you referring to? To uh, his, uh, the, his insurance His insurance company. company, right. Did they take your statement? Well, not your statement. Did they take her statement? They did not. They never even asked you a question? No. But what did they do? They denied your claim. Yeah, they denied it. I sent all the, I sent the police report. Even the last time I talked to them, they told me, you know, this police report is not, it's not signed by the uh, officer. I said, how come? And I sent them another one. But why did they say they were denying the claim? They because just said they said the, the plaintiff said that my wife was making a left. Making no. a left? Yeah. Yes. That's what I've Can been I told. see where they say that? I, they didn't say, I mean, in phone. Do you have it? No, but I have a letter claiming that I was zero negligence in the accident. Yeah, they don't want to pay. Yeah. Come on, give me that. May I ask a question? Yeah. Did he have comprehensive in collision? Was nearly a brand new vehicle. What difference would that make? Why is he getting paid twice? He's going to have. Wait, wait, wait. Did your own insurance company pay to fix your car? No, I have like a high deductible. So you chose not to go that yeah. way. He chose instead to file a lawsuit against you, which right. is his right. I see. He can do that. If I have insurance, and. And, and you and I collide, your defense can't be, ah, she's got insurance, let her figure right. it out with her insurance company. No, there may be reasons why I don't want to go through my insurance company. I have a high deductible, I don't want my rates to go up, whatever it is. So I can either leave you alone and go through my insurance company because you, it's not worth the trouble, or it's worth the trouble right. because you're suing me, and then I get to counterclaim against you, and then I say, hey, this wasn't my fault. Were, was there, I, I don't know that I asked you this question. Yeah. Were there cars in this lane? No. No. Were there other cars in front of him? No. Oh. No. No. Oh, oh you also don't say that there no. were other cars in front of him. I was, sorry. I had a clear shot across the intersection. You did say? Okay, on your lawsuit against them for $3,472.80, you cannot sue them for further damage to a car on a case that you have already settled against them, which is what you do when you settle with an insurance company. All right, so I find zero on that. And on your counterclaim against them for $1,463.84, the damages to your company. I see the estimate for the damages. Yeah, I have to estimate one from the dealer. And you are testifying that you did not, um, that you did not get paid by his insurance company, we no, know. I did not. Nor I by your insurance company, Yeah, I correct? have the denial, denial letter from his insurance right, company. Right, that we know. And right. then that your insurance company didn't pay for it either. No. Correct? Okay. And based on, on what you are showing me and what I have heard here, yeah. I believe that the accident was your fault and I'm ruling in her favor $1,463.84, verdict for the defendants. Good luck, Thank folks. You. Thank you. All right, we'll Oh, well. Works out pretty well for the defendant, but unfortunately, you're the plaintiff. So what's, what's, your, uh, what's your feeling here? The judge rules, the judge rules. That's it. That's nothing you can do. No, nothing you can She's do. She's got the right. final say. Well, you did try to collect after you took the settlement from the insurance company. I didn't know you could do that. You, uh, did you jump through that light maybe and you, no. you calming down a little bit on the road? Do you, need, no. do you need to change any of your driving practices? No. You don't? You would do the same thing next time, same way? A hundred percent. And you're just saying that she just took off and hit you for no reason? I feel that if I was in the middle of the intersection and caught there, she had to yield to me. Okay. But I think right. I lost on the fact that I already collected. Yes, okay. Thank Around you. this way, yes. All right, step on in here and, um, all right, so uh, you must be pretty happy about this. Yeah, I am, I am actually. It's been like, you know, two months going back and forth in mm -hmm. anxiety, but thank God, like, you know, what's really common sense is the truth, you know? Yeah. And I really appreciate Judge Merlin for, for her help, so. Just because the light turns green, it doesn't mean you can just go. You know, you still have to look just in case. Did you, did you, yes. should you have <laughs> taken another look? No. No, I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just I, when I see green, I go. You see no. green, you go, even if there's a truck coming. I, I, I give like 20% no, liability on my <laughs> All right, okay. I, you, yeah. you, you understand what I'm yes, saying, yeah. right? Harvey? Okay, I'm gonna give you the best tip I can about car accidents. Take pictures, take photographs, before you actually move the cars, you want to get them in the position they're in at the time of the crash. So important. That will do it for this case litigants. For the next case on the way into the courtroom, right now.